Hello everyone, welcome to the special CUBE conversation here at the CUBE studio in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier, the co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media and co-host of the CUBE for our special CMO signal series we're launching. Really talking to the top thought leaders in marketing, in the industry, really pushing the envelope on a lot of experimentation. And uh, Robson Grevy, Chief Marketing Officer at New Relic is here. Welcome to this CUBE conversation. Thank you, excited to be with so you. So New Relic is a very progressive company. You have a founder who's very dynamic, writes code, takes sabbaticals, creates product. He's a musician, um, it's prolific. And it kind of sets the tone for your company and you guys are also um, state-of-the-art DevOps company. Yes. So pressure's on to be a progressive marketer. You guys are doing that. Yeah, I think there's, there's some of the, the great things about that DevOps culture are uh, Process-wise, it, it 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 allows us to experiment with different ways of working, and I think that's you know we've ta obviously talked a little bit about agile and the way a, a different way of thinking about how you actually do the work can change the way uh, you output the the kind of things you're willing to make, the way the teams work together, and the degree to which you can integrate marketing and sales really around uh, shorter time frames, faster mm -hmm. uh, faster cycle times, and so we have a. We have a great culture around that. We also have a really great culture around experimentation. I think that's one of the biggest things uh, that uh, that Lou talks a lot about is let's try things. Let's uh, let's look for let's look for experiments. Let's see where we can find mm -hmm. uh, something that unexpected that could yeah. be a big success. And let's not be afraid that yeah. for, for something to go wrong. Yeah. And, and if you can do that, then then you know then you have way way higher odds of finding the you know, sort of 10x. You guys are also in the analytics, you're also looking at the signals, you're very data driven, I'll give you a prop for that, give you a plug, <laughs> New Relic is a very data driven company. But today we're seeing a sea change, a revolution in the tech industry, seeing signals like cryptocurrency, yeah. blockchain, everyone's going you know, crazy for that, they see disruption in that. You've got AI and a bunch of other things, so, and you got the cloud computing revolution, so all this is causing a lot of horizontally scalable change, mm -hmm. which is breaking down the silos of existing systems. Yeah. But you can't just throw systems away, you have systems and marketing. So how are you dealing with that dynamic? Because we're seeing people going, hey, I just can't throw away my systems, but I got to really be innovative and agile to the real time nature of the internet now yeah. while having all those analytics available. How do you, yeah. how do you tackle that, that, that issue? Yeah, we think of it, there's a, there's a couple of ways to think about analytics. Number one is what, what do you need to know in real time to make sure things are working mm -hmm. and that, uh, that your systems are, are up and running and operating effectively. Uh, and that you know that runs sort of everything from up up front in the in web experiences and trial experiences that kind of thing, through to how are leads and customers pro progressing through a through a funnel as they get passed yeah. around the you know the various parts of a company. But then the second you know, approach we take the data is okay after all that's happened, how can we look backwards on it and and what patterns emerge when um, when you look at it over the scale of longer period of time and so. That's the that's kind of the approach to data, but you're right. We can't you can't just take everything and throw it out and start over mm -hmm. again because some startup stopped by with a really cool idea. Yeah. But we, you have to be aggressive about experimentation. I think that's yeah. the you know, back to that big idea about about uh, that we talk about about experimentation. We are trying out a lot of different things all the time, looking for uh, things that could be really successful for us. So intercom is one that that we you know we started to experiment with a little bit for, for in-product communications and we've, we've ex expanded over time as we found it more and more, more useful. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so that's not, uh, we haven't taken and just ripped something else out and yeah. put, made some giant bet on something brand new. We've tried it, we've gotten to know it, and then we found really you know, ways to, to apply that. And we're doing that with a, with a number of different technologies right now. Yeah, I mean, you're in a very powerful position. You're the chief marketing officer, which has to look over a lot of things now. And certainly with IT and cloud, you know, you're essentially in the middle of the fabric of the organization. Plus, you know, people are knocking on your door to sell you stuff. Yeah. But so what, what is, <laughs> that uh, what, you know, okay, yeah. it happens all the time. He's got a big budget. <laughs> what are they saying yeah. to you? Well, who's knocking on your door right now? Who's peppering you? Who's trying to get on your calendar? You, who's bombarding you? Where are you saying, you know, hey, I don't, I'm done with that, or hey, I'm looking for more of that. How do you, how do you deal with that, that tension? Because I'm sure it must be heavy. Yeah, you know, I think there is definitely a lot of, there's a lot of optionality in the market, uh, for sure. And I think there's, been, there's a sort of a new wave of, of MarTech vendors, many of whom are, are sitting kind of right in between sales ops and marketing ops. And, uh, and that's a layer we're really interested in. Systems that can help us better understand the behavior of sales reps and how they're using things that we're making. Uh, and then systems that can better understand the um, indications of, of prospect intent. 
So and, funnel and pipeline or yeah, you those know, kinds we, of we things? We think about it more from, from the context of authentic in, in, uh, engagement. Yeah. And so we don't want to apply a, 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 you know, a, a too much of a, of a um, structure to structured, it. A sales structure to it. We want to try to follow the customer's intent through the process. Because the best prospect is someone who is authentically engaged in trying to find a solution to their problem. Mm -hmm. And so if we can avail ourselves to people in a thoughtful and creative and you know and um, an authentic way, when they need us, when they're trying to solve that problem, then then I think yeah. they can become much more successful prospects. So I love your angle on yeah. agile marketing. Yeah. I think that's table stakes. Now that you got to behave that way, and I'd love to get your yeah. I'll get your thoughts later on the management style and how you make that happen. Yeah. But you mentioned engagement. This is now the new holy grail. There's a lot of data behind it, mm -hmm. and it could be hidden data. It could be data decentralized all over the place. This is the hottest topic. How do you view engagement as a, as a CMO and the impact of the organization? What are you looking for? What's the key premise for your thesis of getting engagement? It, um, it's really the number one, two and three topic we're, we're talking about right now. And, and we think about it from uh, on the, you know, the content side, how do we get, get ourselves uh, really producing a, a, a constant stream of content that has value to people? that uh, either helps them solve a problem right now or helps them think about an architectural issue in a different way. We're trying to invest more and more in technical resources and people who can produce things that are relevant mm -hmm. to all the different kind of users that we have, you know, DevOps people, SREs, you know, our sort of traditional mm -hmm. developer customers. We want to go deep and be super relevant you know, at, at, the, at a content level for them. But then once they start to, in start to spend time with us, we want to then have a progressive way to, to, to uh, Pull them deeper and deeper into our uh, um, into our, our community, and so the things we, we can do some things in digital for that, but then we oftentimes we pop offline and we do a lot of workshops, a lot of education, face to face, face, -to -face where we're we're in communities uh, of uh, we, we you know we look at a map at the start of the year and say we you know, where do we have big user communities, and then we drop events into those places where we take our educators and our product experts and get customers to share with each other. And that becomes a really great platform to put them together and have them help each other as well as learn more about, about what our so you, does. So it sounds like you're blending digital with, with face to face. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a key it's part a big, of your strategy. Key, key part is to, is to make sure that we're getting, um, you're getting time and uh, attention from the, you know, the people who are making decisions around what mm -hmm. technologies they're going to buy, but also that we're really investing time in the people who are using it to in their everyday everyday lives to to do their job better. That's a really cool. Here's some examples of, of, of outcomes that you've seen successful from that forum. So that's a really unique, well not unique, it's pretty obvious if you think about it, but yeah. some people think digital is the holy grail, let's go digital, it's lower cost, but face to face can be expensive, but you're blending it. What's the formula and what are some of the successes that you've seen with the result? Yeah, we tend to try to um, uh, create events that are, that are good for a really specific audience. So if you think about a targeting formula that you would use uh, in, in digital, uh, that will make digital really efficient, that same kind of idea works really well for an event. So if you've got a user community that has, uh, that's really good at doing one thing with your product, and you feel like mm -hmm. that if they knew a few more things that they, they could get better, mm -hmm. then, uh, then we, we help them really advance to the next level. And so we run certification programs where we'll pull together a group of, mm -hmm. of confident users and help them get to the next level. Mm -hmm. And things like that allow us to make a really targeted event that, uh, that allows us to, to reach out to a, to a group and, um, and move them you know, in, to a higher level of competency. To have competency focus is a big deal. Can, can we help you get better at your job? And then community is the other big yeah. one. Can we help you connect with people who are doing the same things, solving the same kinds of problems, and are interested in the same kind of topics? So it sounds like the discovery path of the user, that journey of mm. your potential. Yeah, it's important to us for sure. Yeah. And content sounds like it's important too, that's your engagement. Yes. How are you dealing with the content? Is that all on your properties? How about off property measurement? How do you get engagement for off property? Yeah, you know, um, we, uh, we're we experimenting a lot in that area, uh, in off property. I think we have, um, we've had tons of success inside our, our own, um, you know, on our website and our blogs and those yeah. those kinds of. You do pop a lot of content, so it's we, content we, rich. Yes, we are definitely. Uh, <laughs> we definitely have a lot, a, a lot of. You know, we hopefully, you know, our, our attitude is we want to turn our company inside out. So we want to take all of our Explain experts. Explain that. That's important topic. So you guys are opening up what? We have got we've got customer support people. We have technical sales and technical and, and support engineers. We've got marketing people who are, who are uh, thought leaders in cloud and other architecture topics. 
we really want to take all the expertise that they've got and we want to we want to share it with our with our community. How do you do that? So, through forums, uh, through their Twitter through, handles, through their own all all of the above, really, through their Twitter handles, through yeah. uh, through uh, content that they write and produce, through videos, through a podcast series that we that we run. Um, we're really trying to, and, and then uh, we're trying to expand as much as possible, but then inside our user uh, uh, help yeah. community, yeah. we want to take any, anytime somebody solves a problem for one customer, we want to add it to that so we, so we can. Sounds like open source <laughs> software. If, from <laughs> a knowledge perspective, that's really, I think yeah. a, it's, it's, a, it's an important idea for us. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. You're worried about the risk. I mean, that, you know, I like the idea of just opening it up. It's you know, creating building blocks of knowledge like, open, mm -hmm. like code. It's almost like an open yeah. source software, but it's no open so open knowledge. We think it, if we think if we can help people get really successful at the work they're trying to do, that that uh, that it's going to do great things for us as a brand. What's the rules of the road? Because obviously you might have some haymakers out there. Some employee goes rogue, or uh, you guys just trusting everyone to just go well, out and just do it. You know, um, it's a constant sort of a, a effort to to uh, distribute publishing rights and allow people to to. Um, take more and more ownership of it mm -hmm. and to maintain some editorial controls because I think quality is a big thing that's mm -hmm. probably a bigger concern for us than than somebody going rogue yeah. you know at some level if that happens to yeah. to you the you, you you know you can't so um, is this a new initiative it. or is this just it's a something that's been ongoing for for a while it's progression of an effort we started uh, yeah. you know probably 18 months ago and have, it's a it's a, a wonderful way for an engineering team and a, and a product management team and a marketing team to get together around a really uf, a unified mission as well. Yeah. So our content uh, project is one of those things that I think really pulls us together yeah, in, inside the company in a really fun way as well. It's interesting, you're seeing more and more with social peers want to talk to each other, not the marketing yep. you know, you know, guy and say, hey, just get the Kool-Aid, I, I like the product, I want to talk to someone yeah, and solve my problem. want to have a real conversation about it and I think that's our, our job is to not mm -hmm think of it as marketing, but to think of it as just facilitating a real conversation about how, about how, how a product works for somebody. Okay, I'd love to talk about leadership um, as uh, the chief marketer for New Relic, mm -hmm. okay, in the culture you're in, which is very cool to be in, on the front end, in the front lines, uh, doing cool things. Yeah. What do you do? How do you manage yourself? How do you manage your time? What do you do? How do you organize the troops? How do you motivate them? What's your management style for this marketing in the modern era? Um, I, you know, I think number one, I think we're trying to create a really uh, um, uh, organization that's full of opportunities for people. So it's something something we've done. Uh, I've been there for about two and a half years, and we've really looked hard for people who are, are have tons of potential and find them great things to work on, find new projects, and then let them try out ideas that they've got. Mm -hmm. So if they can own an idea, give it a shot, and uh, and even if it doesn't work, mm -hmm. they'll learn a bunch from the process of trying. Again, what are the craziest ideas you've heard from some of your staff? Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of them involve, uh, um, involve video, sort of, you know, there's always, there's always a great idea for a video that's risky. Yeah. Um, and uh, we've made So the Burger King one with net neutrality going around the web is the funniest video I've seen yeah, all week. Yeah, uh, um, Could be risky, could be also a double-edged sword, right? Vi yeah, video is one of those places where you have to sort of check, your, uh, check yourself a little bit because it could be a great idea. And so sometimes you have to actually make it and look at it and say, yeah, would we publish this or not? Yeah. Um, and you know, so that's definitely the so place. So common where sense is kind of like your, you know, kind of your. You, you start with yeah. I mean, you start with common sense <laughs> for sure. And I, you know, I think we want to be um, a, a part of a, a being culturally responsible. I think in, in Silicon yeah. Valley right now is really making sure that that. Uh, we're attentive to to making sure that we're putting together the right kind of workplace mm -hmm. environment for people, and so our you know our content and the way that we go to market has to yeah. reflect that as well. So, yeah. you know, there's a bunch of filters that you put on it, but you have to take risks, you know, to and, and try to make things. And if they work great, mm -hmm. and if they don't, then you know, it's, it, it, the cost of that is is less than 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 um, the cost of failure is so low in some of these things. You just have to try. Well, you know, we're into video here at the Cube. Um, yep. I have to ask you: Do you see video more and more? in the marketing mix, and if so, how? And how does that compare to the old methods? I mean, we've seen you know, the media business change in journalism, yeah. certainly on the analyst community. Mm -hmm. I mean, who reads white papers? Maybe they do, maybe they don't, yeah. or you know, who, yeah. how do they engage? What content formula do you see as you know, state-of-the-art engagement? Is it video, is it a mix? How do you view that? It's a mix, really. I think video is really powerful, um, and it can be great to treat topics in a short form in a really powerful way. Uh, I think we could stretch it out a little bit, and in terms of how to and and uh, and teaching and education also, but there are times when oh, and other things like you know like a white paper are still relevant. Yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna so, do their homework and and get ready for the big test. Yes, you know how to install yeah, exactly. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. big surprises for you in the industry. If you can look back and talk to yourself a few years ago and say, wow, I didn't think that was going to happen, or I kind of knew this was going to be a trend we'd be on. You know, where's the tailwinds, where's the headwinds in the industry as a marketer to be innovative, be on the cutting edge, to deliver the value you need to do for your customers and for the company? Yeah, I think there's a there's a bunch of great tailwinds organizationally and um, and in the uh, approach to work. And as you talked about about agile, like I think that's it's been a great thing to see people jump in and try to work in a different way. That's uh, that's created tons of scale for a, for a, a department like ours where we're trying to go to more countries and more places constantly. Having a better way to work where we waste less effort, where we where we find problems and fix things way faster. Has, has given us a chance to, to build leverage. And I think that's just that integration of engineering attitudes with, uh, with marketing processes yeah. has been a, you know, is, is an awesome thing. Like everybody in you know, our marketing department, or at least a lot of people have read the DevOps handbook and we have got a lot of you know, sort of devotees <laughs> yeah. of that thought process yeah. that are, you know, that don't sit in engineering, in, engineering yeah. jobs. DevOps ethos, I think, is going to be looked at as one of those things that's moment in history that has changed so much I was just at Sundance Film Festival yeah. and DevOps ethos is going to filmmaking yeah. and artistry, yeah. sort of the craft and how that yep. waterfall uh, for the elite studios is opening up an amateur yeah. market in the indie. So they're agile filmmakers and artists now doing cool stuff. Yep. Um, so it's going to happen. So, uh, yeah, uh, and of course we love infrastructure as code. We'll talk about you know, that all day long. <laughs> we love DevOps. So I got to ask you the marketing question will be a theme of my program of the, of the CMO is, um, if I say infrastructure, uh, marketing as code, Mm -hmm. Infrastructure as code enabled a lot of automation, some abstracted away, horizontally scalable, and new opportunities created a lot of leverage, yeah. a lot of value. Mm -hmm. um, infrastructure as code created the cloud. Yeah. Is there a marketing as code ethos? And what would that look like if I could say, apply DevOps to marketing? Yeah. And if you could look at that and you, had, you could say, hey, magic wand, give me some DevOps marketing, marketing as code. What would you have automated away? What would be uh, available to you. What would the APIs look like? What's your vision for that? What would the APIs look like? I don't think it exists yet, but we're fantasizing about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think the things that tend to slow marketing departments down really are sort of old school things like approvals. You know, that and how hard it is to, to get humans to agree on on uh, things that should be really, really easy. So if the, if the first thing Provisioning you could, an order. <laughs> the, if the first thing you could do is just automate that, that system of, of agreeing that something's ready to go and send it out, that I think you'd, you'd create so much efficiency inside marketing departments all, you know, all over the world. And that, that involves having a really great, you know, an API is a great, mm -hmm. is a great thought in that because it, yeah. the, the expectations have to get matched up of yeah. what's being communicated yeah. on both sides so that so we can, uh, you know, we have a channel with which to agree on something. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, that to me is, is... And analytics are probably huge too. You want to have, you know, instant analytics. That's, I don't care which database it came from. Yeah, yes, that exactly. That kind of thing. Yeah, well then, then in that sort of sense of, of DevOps and continuous point, but then you got some feedback on, on uh, did it work? Was it the right thing to do? Should we do more of it? Should we fix it in some yeah. specific way? Yeah, I think that's... Yeah, that's and I think that's an interesting angle, and then the face-to-face -face thing that you do, I find really interesting mm -hmm. because what you're doing is creating that face-to-face -face resource, that value, yeah. is so intimate, yep. and it's really good, it's the best engagement data you can get is face-to-face. Yes. -face. Yeah, you know, and I think it also allows us to build relationships to the point where we are getting invited into Slack channels to, you know, yeah. so to help, help yeah. companies, you know, in, in real time at sometimes. I think there's a really So humanizing the company and the employees yeah. is critical. Yeah. Big, you can't just be just digital. Yes, big, it's a big deal for awesome. us. Awesome. Yeah. Robson, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE, the special CMO series. Is there a DevOps, is, can we automate away? What's going to automate? Where's the value going to be? You know, marketing's super exciting. Again, MarTech, you know, some are saying it's changing rapidly with the cloud AI and all these awesome new technologies. What's going to change? That's what we're going to be exploring here on the CMO CUBE conversation. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching. <laughs>